Great, good morning. Um, it is 8.02 a.m. and a call to order this meeting of the board of, of the select board. Uh, uh, let's see, we are a virtual meeting this morning. Um, if folks want to call into the meeting, if they're watching it on YouTube, you can call in um, at 408-418-9388. And the information to join the meeting is um, on the website, tuxbury-ma.gov. Okay, so our agenda this morning is um, Ms. Graffio and uh, the the maps and the reprecincting. So it's all yours. Good morning. Um, I'm here this morning to present to you for your consideration the proposed 2020 reprecincting plan for the town of Tuxbury. Um, we spoke uh, in detail about it at last Tuesday's meeting. Um, so today I am asking you to um, adopt or accept the proposed map and um, precinct boundaries, um, as well as the legal description and the um, the block, block boundaries. Um, so if I could just um, share my screen, I can pull the map up and then I can um, open it up to any questions. All right, can, can everybody see that? No, not yet. Now we can. Okay, perfect. So um, just to point out a few highlights, um, you can see over here um, on the right hand side in the legend that um, proposing to renumber the precincts. Um, previously, we used um, 1, 1A, 2, 2A, 3, 3A, and 4, 4A. And I'm uh, proposing to just um, use precincts one through eight. Um, the and the reason for that is uh, there tended to be a little bit of confusion for voters when they came into their um, their voting location or precinct and knew that they were either three or three A, um, but sometimes forgot. So I I thought that it might be easier for voters to just remember the number. Um, another. Um, reason is with the split precinct, that's probably going to bring an A in. It's probably will be five and five A due to the split precinct of the um, legislative representative district. Um, Ms. Graffio, would you mind um, zooming in on that map? I can't see the legend. Um. Uh, I'm not sure. Just at the bottom of the screen, you have your at the bottom of the PowerPoint, you can increase the size. The zoom size of the slide. No, just yeah, exactly. Oop. There we go. Okay. All right. So that's pretty significant because you're so close. You're eight, 18 here and 21 there on seven and, and five. They're really close. They're really close, right? So we can't go over 4,000. And um, we can't have a differential of more or less than 5%. So these numbers up here indicate uh, the target population for each precinct as well as the minimum. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Um, can you go back to the uh, boundaries, the, the map itself? Um, so when we talk about the split precinct, um, it's really this northern portion of precinct five that will be voting in the 18th, uh, in the 19th Middlesex. 
So is most of, is that precinct one, the green section, is that also precinct. in the 19th with Vana Howard? Precinct, precinct one is the precinct that's going to be moved over to the 17th Middlesex representative district. And so the shape of precinct one is locked into this shape due to the use of the 2010 boundary. Um, by the by the legislature. Oh, excuse me. And so also three, this, this um, precinct three and seven, which was previously three a. Um, so those shapes. Also, are the 2010 boundaries, so that's why we needed to. To pull in this piece of it, because our 2010 boundaries came down here. So, it's just, it's, I think it's a little over 500 residents. That will be affected that will in a state election. Vote in a different district than. Precinct 5, the rest of precinct 5. There any questions from the board? No questions on my end. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mackey. Mr. Johnson. No, I have no questions. I, I know that um, the town clerk put a lot of time and effort into this. And I'm, I'm going to take it on um, faith that. She's satisfied this is the best effort we can make considering all of the factors and variables. And when you brought up the um, the legend, it, it's pretty clear that each of the precincts that you've established are very, very close in terms of total voting population. So I, I appreciate the effort on that. Thank you. Okay. I don't think I have any further questions. We've we've talked on the phone um, and we talked at our, our last meeting and then again this morning. I think it's important for folks to know, realize how close all of these precincts are. Um, and particularly, um, I think it's five and seven are to the 4,000 limit. You've done a great job and I know that um, you worked with a state committee, LRDC, I think. Yeah, so I worked with the Secretary of State Census Division um, they have all the tools to help, you know, develop these maps. So uh, we've worked closely with them. Um, at this point, uh, if it is approved, I will send all of the materials to the LEDRC, and it would be uh, their decision to um, either accept or um, reject. If they reject, then it comes back to us to make some changes. Are there any chances they're going to ask us to put in a ninth precinct? Do you think? Uh, no, that was one of um, our considerations um, to try to figure out if we could eliminate the split precinct altogether once we realized that they used the 2010 boundaries to formulate their uh, legislative districts. And um, we would have to add multiple precincts to, to that. Um, keeping in mind that we're stuck to these boundaries. So the population in precinct one really really is the the standard that we needed to we needed to keep because we can't we can't change these lines so in order to not split multiple precincts um this was the best option to kind of just go along this line we had to you know move move some of the population into these other districts but they are all in the same legislative district, so there won't be any splits. It's this, no, and it's, oh, I'm sorry. It's this boundary here, um, you know, three, seven, and one that we, we are bound to. Well, and that's, and that part of that is because of this, you can only have a certain percentage difference between each precinct. So once they set one, we, we can only be off by a little bit everywhere else. So, and that's why this legend is important just for folks that watch this um, at home later to understand that. Okay. Yeah. Um, if this is approved procedural wise, what's the um, process to let residents in Tewksbury know where they vote? So some, a lot of people will be changing. 
or some people will be changing. So I will notify each voter by mail of what they're uh, uh, actually it's each household that has a voter will receive notification as to what their precinct uh, is and their location where they would be voting. Uh, I will also um, put out press releases to have people look look to that. Okay, great. All right, I have no further questions. Mr. Montori, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, I think uh, the town clerk's laid everything out, so. All right, Ma um, Madam uh, Vice Chairwoman, can I um, one question through uh, through you to the town clerk and the town manager, if you don't mind? Um, and that is specifically, we had a lengthy discussion last week about this topic, um, and the concern that um, that I and I think some of the other selectmen um, or board members raised um, concern around having three. Uh, state representatives and um, the impact of that on Tewksbury. My opinion, that's a negative impact, but I'm just curious if there's been any further communication from the delegation around that topic since we last met that is noteworthy toward any possible changes. Um, I mean, I've had conversations with uh, Representative Robinson, who was um, Contacted me during the uh, the vote. There really is nothing they can do. It's it's lack of a better term. It's it's a done deal. There are some attempts by other reps that uh, failed uh, to make any changes. So I think in the end their hands were tied, and there's uh, not much we can do based on the um, based on what was voted on. Vote presented. All right, and and I I will note um, and I appreciate that. That information, Mr. Monteri, but I, if the newspapers are correct, there have been some districts that were revised or changed, and and I think a lot of that stemmed from concerns that were raised. So, I just want to make sure that's noted by our residents. I think those, I think those changes might have been made prior to the to the vote hitting the floor. Mm -hmm. I spoke to the representative. It was when it was being okay. taken on the floor, so it was more difficult. Yeah. Okay. But Thank we you. Did, we did present um, testimony for the hearing um, of the special joint committee on redistricting. Um, so we we sent our proposed yep. map early, and we we communicated with our delegates uh, early along in the process. Um, and when we we saw that other uh, communities were changed, I, I sent one one last ditch effort email to our delegates to see if there was anything that they could do to at least eliminate the split district. Um, preferably we wanted to keep um, precinct one um, where it is legislate in the same legislative district. But again, um, as Mr. Montori stated at that point, uh, I, the ship had sailed. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. And I know we've we've all or many of us have independently communicated those concerns as well. So it's clearly there was um, enough information on the table to warrant consideration. Um, additionally, thank you, Mr. Johnson, for that and for pointing that out. I also um, communicated with the delegation when I saw that Brad Jones had put in amendments um, that was reported in the news and I was I asked for our delegation to put in amendments to this map um, and he actually ended up withdrawing those amendments on the floor the next day after it was reported um, because there was the committee was not really allowing or accepting any changes at that point. I also understand that Chelmsford has four representatives. I think that's right, Mr. Montori. And so they've talked about no, that and that didn't get any relief on their end either, which no. I think is atrocious. Yeah, I don't think any community in the end saw relief that they were seeking once the uh, committee had made their vote. Yeah, no, I don't think so either. So, okay. If there's no further discussion, is there um, a motion from the board? Um, I'll offer a motion to approve the um, 
re-precincting and redistricting as proposed by the town clerk. Second. I have a motion to second. Uh, because this is a virtual meeting, we'll take a roll call vote. Mr. Johnson, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Mackey, how do you vote? Aye. I vote aye as well. So that is 3-0 unanimous approval of this precinct map. Uh, for the record, uh, for the folks at home, uh, Mr. Kelly and Ms. Stronach were not able to join us this morning um, due to uh, work complications. Okay, so your process from now, um, Ms. Graffio, is to send this back to the LEDRC uh, and they'll get a, they'll finally review that and so forth. And then when can we expect to have confirmation on these, uh, this map? As soon as I receive confirmation that it has been approved, or the decision of the LEDRC, I should say, I will uh, notify the board. Okay. And uh, the process at that point will be um, once it is accepted to uh, get entered into the voter registration and system, um, which will help me to generate the mailing that we spoke about, uh, which will notify each voter or each household that has a voter of their precinct. Um, now, is it still possible? I don't think it's actually feasible, but is it still um, possible for us to continue to lobby our delegation? Um, I know that we had talked about possible changes could be made into December. Is that still an open avenue? Yes. So we have until December, I believe it's December 15th. I don't have the date right in front of me, so don't quote me on that. Um, to go back, go, if, if there are any changes that will give us some relief, then um, I will also come back to the board with that information. Has anybody heard anything from the Lowell delegation at all? I have not. I have not. Um, does it behoove us in any way to reach out to them? I might do that um, myself <coughs> and I don't know that it's going to, I don't think it'll change anything anyway, but um, part of the conversation and Chelmsford as well. I believe that the, that this was voted on, uh, what was it last Thursday? Oh, you so. <laughs> I wasn't moving. <laughs> um, last Thursday in Lowell. I, I believe the the legislator the legislature voted on it. I, I believe on Thursday, so their their boundaries are set. Okay. All right. Um, well, is there any other business before the board? There's nothing on our agenda. I'm all set. All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right, roll call vote. Mr. Johnson, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Mackey, how do you vote? Aye. Vote aye as well. We are adjourned at 8.21 a.m. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Grafio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.